What is up, everybody? I've got a treat for you guys today because we are here at... Play to Win Games, Knoxville, Tennessee. Play to Win Games in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is a really cool store. This is my first time coming here, so I'm very excited for these gentlemen to take me around the store. But first, if you guys don't mind, introduce yourselves to the people and kind of just tell people what, what the store is. Go ahead, Mark. So, my name is Mark Spears, and this is Josiah Miller. We're the two owners here. Uh, we specialize in video games, trading cards like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering. For video games, we try to focus mostly, mostly on retro stuff. And let me tell you guys, I've took a peek at some of the stuff, and they've got some really good stuff. We're going to take a closer look at that a little bit later. But before we get into that, guys, if you don't mind, take us around a tour, a tour of the store. Coming in the front door, we uh, we actually have a claw machine that people can win Pokemon plushes by playing. And then you come over here, we have one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Terminals. So you actually, you put a dollar in, it spits a card out, and you can actually scan cards on this and summon them on the game. So. What year is this guy? Do you know off the top of your head? I think it came out in 2012-ish. Okay. Yeah, we got all of our snacks and then surrounded by snacks is all of our plush. I see these in stores like this a lot. So do, do, do these actually sell pretty decent, these plush? They sell very good. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, interesting. We even have some of the older like Hasbro ones with oh, tags yeah. still intact That's from way cool. back in the day. So, so. That, so those would have came out, I'm assuming, like around the time of the original games then, huh? Yeah, 98. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, like, they're, like, they're like 90s plushes. They came, came still out around red and blue. Oh, those <laughs> are pricey, huh, man? <laughs> 50 bucks. That sounds about right, especially with the tag still yeah. attached. Because these are basically vintage now at this yeah, point. They're right? near impossible yeah. to find. That's really freaking cool, everybody. A bunch of the higher end games are in here. We have a bunch of like CIB games up top mm -hmm. uh, for some of the older systems. We've got all the newer accessories, third party ones. We've got some original ones. We make sure all our stuff is testing. We have two guys in house that do any repairs that are necessary, any testing. We, yeah. we want to make sure our stuff's good before it comes out. We try to go out to Japan once every year or so, pick out a bunch of some of the exclusive stuff. Like all yes. these plushes are actually from Tokyo. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. All the, we have up here anime figures nice. straight from Tokyo. Yeah. The Worlds was in Yokohama last year, so I made a point to uh, go out to Pokemon Worlds to nice. pick up a ton of stuff for that. Now tell me about these giant Yu-Gi-Oh cards I'm seeing up here. I've never seen anything like that before. So, so the giant cards uh, are from an event that Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, so it's called Attack of the Giant Card. And so you play in these tournaments, and first place generally wins this. Wow. Or recently, they've started letting you collect prize tickets when you go to the events, and then you can redeem a lot of prize tickets to get some of these. Wow. So that there are some of them. There's one in the world, two in the world type wow. stuff. Yeah, like, like for instance, like uh, the Dark Magician of Chaos. If someone wanted it, it's fifteen thousand dollars. Whoa, so. that's wild, man. I believe there are two of that one. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. SJC Crush Card from Yu-Gi-Oh. That's the most notable prize card. We've got the. Do you remember back in the old? days when we were watching uh, Kids WB. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the essay contest they did for the con Card of Sanctity? Vaguely, yeah. But that is one of six of them in the world. How much is that guy? Uh, if you had to guess. So the highest offer I got was like 40000 I would. Wow. Uh, I, I would want like 60000 yeah. probably. Wow. What made you decide to open a retail store like this? And then number two, um, how difficult was it to, to kind of get it off the ground? So... One of the reasons to open, to be honest with you, is between two houses and storage units, we were just running out of room all the time. Yeah, that it, is the honest answer. We ran yeah. out of space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in, in total, it was always a dream of ours to own mm -hmm. a game store. Um, and it, it's more so, this is everything we grew up with. Oh, yeah. So we get, yeah. we, we basically got to create like a museum yes. per se. Okay. I, I mean, it's all for sale, but, right. but it, it's basically just a museum of mm -hmm. most 90s kids' childhoods. Uh, remind me, how long have you guys been open? Three months. Three yeah. months. So you're basically brand new. Yeah. Brand yeah, new. Yeah, we've only been here three months. <laughs> <laughs> so has it been fun so far? Have you been enjoying it? It's been I'm very sure it's a fun. Lot of work, but it, it's got to be fun still too, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's been pretty awesome. Uh, we do a, we've done a lot of cards online for a long mm -hmm. time. So we're, we're not new to the business, but we are new to the retail shop and it's yeah. a completely different world. Like we, yeah. there's so many things we're still learning. Yeah.
Oh, you got it. So, so <laughs> let me just say, before you guys talk about this, this cabinet in particular is one of my favorites. Love this cabinet. So, so, so tell me about this. Like, where, where'd you guys get this, and what's what's the story behind this? So, so, so actually, uh, funny enough, we had one arcade machine already before we opened, mm -hmm. and so we went to an arcade auction in hopes to get like one more cabinet to uh, to fill a space, mm -hmm. and and then we'll, we'll we'll get to that. But we ended up filling a truck. So. Yeah, just wow. with a bunch of arcade cabinets, and just it, it was just something else to add to the store. Just it gives it a nice atmosphere. Gives you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a card player to just come enjoy your time here. You know, yeah. like yeah. we don't know we have uh, people come in daily, and that they just sit around and play games. Nice. And yeah. we have the tables there for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to charge people to come have fun, right? Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, exactly. So we grew up in in card shops, game mm -hmm. stores, stuff like that, like. We want people to actually enjoy their time. So that is actually like the anniversary cabinet. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's yeah. not the, I think, I believe the original was actually blue for Mario, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., mm -hmm. Fix It Felix, and a couple others. It yeah. was actually like a, like a sky blue for the originals. Yeah. So yeah, th this is, this is just kind of like a featured case. We try to rotate some stuff in and out of it just to kind of switch up the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we, we like, we like having the museum type atmosphere for Absolutely. people to walk through, just be able to relive and we want you to be able to come back more than come here more than once and just mm -hmm. see different stuff cube of war for gamecube fire emblem uh and, and it just goes down to like pokemon xds with the gamecube next to it coliseum and then some special edition consoles we have we have the wind waker wii u we've got the watermelon n64 yeah what is this japanese N64? that's the japanese zelda one well oh. one of the things i picked up in the okay. recent trip to japan nice over here on this wall we have all the consoles basic consoles that we have in stock make sure to list everything that we have like i said all our stuff's tested we make sure it's all ready to go mm -hmm everything we need. If we if it doesn't have every part, it's not on the shelf. So is this a way for you to save space out here? I'm assuming yeah. you've got these like in. Now how do you package these? Uh, one second, I will grab one. All right, so we got a Dreamcast here. Yeah, we got a Dreamcast. We keep make, make sure to have the controllers, the cords, yeah. original if we can. Make sure to clean it up, test it, yeah. have it all packaged. Beautiful. You know, behind this wall right here, we have all our card stock inventory, all, mm -hmm. all our video game consoles. Mm -hmm. Currently, I think we have uh, 36 uh, seats out for card players. Uh, we have extras if, if other people ever come out and, and we're running out of tournament space. But, uh, but, but yeah, this is just the play area for our tournaments. Mm -hmm. I think our average tournament's like eight to 12 people, I'd say, come out per tournament. Oh and then, and then back here, you will see that we have oh, a <laughs> we have a full arcade back here. I see. This is blowing my mind right here. All right, folks, so we are going to take a little tour of the retro game selection and just the game selection in general. And I'm going to see if there's anything that I can walk out of here with today to add to the collection. Now, down here is obviously what really caught my eye, and that is this amazing selection of GameCube games. And I've already kind of looked through here, and actually I'm seeing a game that I did not check, and that's Simpsons Hit and Run. So I'm going to need to check that on my app to see if I need that game. Great selection of Wii games back there. And by the way, I do want to mention, their prices are very, very, very fair. Very fair prices. Um, so if you come here, you're, you're not gonna be spending an arm and a leg on games. You're gonna get a fair deal. Got an amazing selection of retro games. A lot of Super Nintendo games, Nintendo 64, NES. Got some box Super Nintendo games. Really, really good stuff. Some really nice, a nice selection of PS2 games here. Stuff that a lot of uncommon to rare stuff that you just don't see very often, including PS1. Nice cases, a lot of times when you see PS1 games, you know, the glass cases are all beat up and cracked and, and busted up, but these are all uh, looking pretty nice. Now we've got some of the more common to uncommon GameCube games up here, and I am happy to report that there is a GameCube game up here that I need for the collection. And it's gonna shock you guys, because first off, I wanna say I'm only 100 games away, which a lot of you know. Secondly, 
I've not bought a single GameCube game in 2024, so here at Play to Win Games, I am buying my first GameCube game of the year, and that is going to be Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex Complete. And by the way, look at that beautiful price. 15 bucks for a clean, great condition, complete copy of this game is a fantastic deal. But that's not all. They have a few Japanese GameCube games here, and I spotted one that is complete, great condition. This actually never released in the US. Um, I don't know if it released in, in Europe. Did this one release in Europe? Was it, okay, so this was a Japanese exclusive. Uh, Battle Stadium, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto. He tells me this is like Super Smash Bros, but with uh, anime. You guys are gonna be shocked by this, but until recently, I had never played a PlayStation 3 in my life. During that era, I was all Xbox 360 and Wii U. Recently, I got a slim PS3. I bought my first PS3 game, which was 3D Dot Game Heroes. I figured I should get that one first because it's probably just gonna keep going up in price. And I've, I'm almost to the end of the game, so maybe it's about time for me to go ahead and pick out the next PS3 game I'm gonna play. So let's kind of take a look here. Now I'm trying to only get PlayStation 3 exclusives, I'm trying to kind of stick with that. You know what, maybe I'll get one of the Ratchet and Clanks. So we got Ratchet and Clank All for One, which uh, that is not the kind of Ratchet and Clank game I want. I probably want either Full Frontal Assault or A Crack in Time. So I think that Ratchet and Clank A Crack in Time is going to be the next PS3 game that I play whenever I beat 3D Dog Game Heroes, but we also have Resistance Follow Man. I think I'm gonna stick with Ratchet and Clank. I've heard it's really good. In this glass case, as you saw earlier, there's a lot of really good stuff here. Now I do need Cubivore and Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Unfortunately, they're both no manuals. Otherwise, I would seriously consider walking out of here with one of those. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I have Baton Kaito's Origins. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and grab Baton Kaito's Origins. I do not have it yet. This is really clean, really great condition. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the collection. I think we've got a final stack here that I'm gonna walk away with. Um, so we're looking at Baton Kaito's Origins, Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex, Ratchet and Clank, A Crack in Time, uh, Battle Stadium, I'm just gonna call it Battle Stadium. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the Game Boy Advance. So this is a really nice stack here and I'm happy to give you guys some business and give you some of my money because I love supporting places like this. So 